today we're going to be making a fast, easy entree called Mexican stuffed peppers. I know you're going to want to follow along as we do the recipe, so visit www.fork-road.com and download the recipe so that you will have a copy of it for yourself. The first thing that we always do in the kitchen, particularly when we're using a variety of ingredients, is to assemble the ingredients all in one place. In the culinary world, we call this mise en place, which means everything in its place. And that way you know that you've got all the ingredients that you need in the correct proportions and you don't have to run to the store in the middle of the recipe to go get something. So we'll look at the ingredients that are required for Mexican stuffed peppers. And we realize the first thing that we need is sunflower seeds that have been soaked for 12 hours. There's another reason why we look at the ingredient list before we even begin. Because if I wanted to make this recipe right now and I hadn't soaked the sunflower seeds, well, I'd be out of luck. So since you've already soaked your sunflower seeds, you can follow along with me and we'll get, get going. The, we'll put the sunflower seeds into the bowl, the work bowl of the food processor. And then we'll add the, the sun-dried tomatoes. In today's case, I'm using some, it says sun-dried tomatoes, and you would either reconstitute or rehydrate them, or you'll notice that there's a little bit of oil in my sun-dried tomatoes. I use sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil. For this recipe, I like that. I think it makes the recipe hold together or bind a little bit better. Would reconstituted uh, um, sun-dried tomatoes work? Absolutely, it's your choice, but I used the sun-dried ones because that's what I like, the ones in the oil. Um, next, we're going to be using fresh cilantro. You'll notice that I've got my cilantro here in water in front of me. The reason I've done that is I've just simply removed this right from the refrigerator. When I buy my cilantro at the store or at the farmer's market, it usually comes already bunched together. What I'm going to do now is take the, the amount that I need for the recipe, just simply twist off the top, and I can do this with cilantro because the cilantro stems aren't particularly tough. So I don't mind if a little bit of the stem gets in there. I'll put it back in the water. And now the amount that I've, I've left behind that I'm not going to be using, I'm going to use a, a shower cap, place it over the top, and then when this goes back into the refrigerator, it will stay fresh longer. The reason why, there's air moving around your refrigerator and the air could bruise the leaves and cause the cilantro or any of your fresh herbs to go bad more quickly. So that's a good tip for you to have so that you know how to keep those herbs good and fresh for longer. I'm also gonna be using some fresh garlic. Now, because I'm using a food processor, it will do a good job of incorporating, but it won't completely homogenize the ingredients. So rather than just throw the entire clove in there, because then you run the risk of somebody getting a big mouthful of garlic, I'm gonna use a garlic press, which is this piece of equipment. It's a really easy um, thing to find in a cookware store or um, even at a department store, oftentimes we'll have them. I'm going to squeeze this the garlic comes out the end and then I just take my chef knife and now it's already minced. I could mince it by hand if I chose to, but that just keeps me in the kitchen a little longer and I want to get to the dinner table and start eating this good stuff. I'm using some miso as part of the ingredient list here. Miso is simply a fermented soybean paste. It's unpasteurized. I'm going to add that to the food processor. If you don't think you've had it, I bet you have. If you've ever eaten in a Chinese restaurant or had sushi, the clear broth soup that they bring you beforehand is very often miso. It's a very salty fla flavor and it adds what we call umami or a very nice, hard to describe flavor to the dish. I'm going to be adding some paprika and I'm also going to be adding some unrefined salt. The final ingredient in the Mexican stuffed peppers is Mexican seasoning. There are a variety of different Mexican seasonings available on the market. Different manufacturers make different blends. So for example, it, and it's the same thing with like um, apple pie spice or pumpkin pie spice. There's a variety, the different balances. Some might have a little bit more of this. Mexican seasoning typically has traditional Mexican flavors in it. So it would have cumin and cilantro and onion and garlic and those kinds of things. Um, I've chosen a brand that I like in particular, and I'm just going to add a small amount of that in there. Remembering that whenever I add seasonings to, to a dish, I can always add more. But once I've got it in there, I can't get it back out. So now I'm going to snap on the lid and just simply pulse to get it started. 
Then I'll turn it on. Now the filling is done. All that's left to do is to prepare the pepper. And to do that, it's as easy as cutting off the top. Now, this pepper happens to be stable. There are many times that you'll buy a pepper at the store and when you want to set it onto the plate and, ha and present it to guests, it's unstable and it might topple. Let me show you what you do with that. The first thing I do is I would take the top off. I'll be removing the seed bed and putting it into my compost container. I'll bang the seeds out onto my board so that when I'm ready to fill it, the seeds are, um, are ready to go or, or have been removed. And then to t make the pepper more stable, I'm just going to simply even up the bottom. I'm going to cut very lightly so I don't cut into the pepper and take away some of the, the, what becomes the pepper bowl. Now it's completely stable and it won't rock and rock and roll, except for when you eat it. So I'm going to take the filling, put it into the peppers, and voila, I've got dinner.